Andrew Flavel, Wealth Manager at Alpha Wealth, joins us now for a look at whether you should include private equity in your portfolio. Andrew, good to have you with us this evening. Maybe that's a good point to start. How do you, first of all, include private equity in your portfolio? Well, there are a few ways to incorporate it. And obviously, private equity is not for all investors, but those who are willing to sacrifice liquidity and are in a position to take a longer time horizon and target pure capital growth strategies with their capital, they, should, they can look to uh, access private equity in three simple ways. One is an ETF strategy. You go into the market um, in the US, they're a lot more liquid and they're actually they're tradable daily. And you can buy an ETF that tracks the performance of private equity investments. Realistically, this is our worst way to access the asset class, so I wouldn't recommend that at all. Mm. Then there's listed companies that are actually private equity gurus. I mean, you've got Blackstone, KKR, and Carlyle Group. They all listed businesses, trade in the States, massive amounts of liquidity. They trade at very decent um, price earnings multiples as well as strong dividend yields. So that's another way to as access the asset class and ultimately your performance of private equity as an asset class does well. Those managers are going to do well, which will be reflected in their share price. And then the third way, which is our preferred way, is on a deal by deal basis. You look for specific assets, you look to back the right management team and yeah, you'd make a direct equity investment or debt investment into that into that business. Andrew, it's Lindsay Williams in, in Cape Town. Just looking at the screen here in 2011, private equity company Breit bought a 24.6% stake in a company called Pepcor for 4.18 billion, valuing the company at about 17 billion. The rest is history. It's all un unravelled today. What's the, what was the sale today? 68 billion. I mean, it's obviously the, the numbers are different, the comparisons are different. But if you had invested in Breit at that time, goodness me, you would have done well. Yeah, a huge amount of um, money returned to shareholders, and you got. Now you're basically left with a business that's got Premier Foods and Iceland Food Group so, and a big cash component. So it'll be interesting to see how they deploy that. And they've got a great track record. I mean, they were able to, to buy Pepcor. So that's a business now that's done unbelievably well for their investors. So you back John Nodder and their investment team, and they're going to look to target new acquisitions and grow going forward. So yeah, that's the exact type of investment. So when I was talking about Carlisle KKR, an example locally, would be the listed break, and now would be a very interesting time. Obviously, the share price took a bit of a knock today as they got rid of their, or well, made indications of getting rid of their cash cow. Um, it, now that that's sitting on a large cash component, obviously there's a higher risk premium with the stock because people aren't exactly sure what the rollout strategy is going to be and what acquisitions they're going to target going forward. But happy to back that team for sure. Now, Andrew, you said the recommended way in is to invest in individual deals, debt equity. How will the proverbial man in the street gather the knowledge to assess individual private equity deals? Mm. Or do you employ, for want of a better word, an intermediary that ethos fund gets these funds together, mm. does all the work for you, does all the admin, does all the control, looking at selling, buying? The due diligence process, yeah. yeah, absolutely. You need to, if you... The proverbial man on the street and unable to do it yourself, you definitely need to partner with a, with a private equity specialist, a firm that's been investing in that asset class for ages, has a great track record, is, has the deal flow as well, so that they're not just swinging away at every single opportunity that comes their way, but actually a firm that have vetted transactions for years and have identified some great targets, and they'll all have their track records. Um, from our perspective, we target it because we deal with high net worth individuals that are happy to sacrifice illiquidity. We have partners in the UK that help vet transactions for us. We have partners locally that help vet transactions for us. So our deal flow is very good and we have a team committed to those due diligence procedures. I wouldn't recommend just simply investing in a business in the unlisted space without having partnered with someone who's absolutely broken down both the balance sheet, the management team, as well as the play going forward and the ability to return capital to the shareholders. One of the differences with private equity is that the fee structure is different to what uh, an investor would pay if they were a managed share portfolio, a unit trust uh, type of, 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 of investment. Do you want to explain a bit more around that and why that, uh, with that fee structure an investor still ends up doing well in your opinion? Yeah, absolutely. So you've got your normal managers, let's say they charge a percent, they're trading your listed kind of SABs, your BHP bulletin, they're building your portfolio. 
The private equity fee structure, simply on the whole, two and twenty is the rule of thumb. Two, the rule of thumb: two percent of your assets under management is the fee that they charge you, and then twenty percent outperformance above a predetermined benchmark, roughly speaking, ten percent, whether it's locally or offshore. So the 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 reason for the higher assets under management fee, that two percent, is because they are complete active management. I mean you. They're breaking down the business. The fund manager actually becomes a part of the business, mm -hmm. helps them with their acquisition strategy, helps raise capital if they need to, helps roadshow the business in order to kind of grow their sales, and really rolls up his sleeve and gets involved. That's the type of private equity fund manager you want to have on your side. Mm -hmm. um, so that Andrew, justifies the 2%. We're just running 2%. out of time now. I want to get down to the basics. Sorry to interrupt you, but we need to ask this question. You've seen a film called Wall Street with Gordon Gecko. You've seen a film called Other People's Money with Danny DeVito. And uh, you've, the private equity people have got this really bad reputation as being rapacious uh, vultures. They take a company, they split it up, they lose jobs, but they make money for the, uh, the shareholders. Surely not the case. Well, yeah, the big thing is you gear the business's cash flows up, distribute that to shareholders, it improves their IRRs, and the business is left to suffer. Those examples are, are you see them all the time. But that's definitely not the case when we're looking for opportunities. And the reason for that is because you're actually looking to, out, that's not sustainable in the long term. We're not looking for a five-year exit when we enter these transactions. It's very important because a lot of private equity funds have a fixed mandate that they have to exit after five years. So they want to spool up those cash flows, distribute to their investors so that they can absolutely milk the returns from an IRR perspective. But then they have to exit after five years. Now the business they're going to sell in five years time is going to be a lot different if you had someone, a partner, who came into that business and grew with the company. And if it took 20 years for the strategy to play out, mm -hmm. well, that's fine. The, the returns will be greater and more sustainable. Exactly. Andrew, such a pleasure having you in today. I'm sure a lot of people getting insights on that. That's uh, Andrew Flavel. He's a wealth manager at Alpha Wealth.